Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Anne McCauley. My Twitter handle, sadly, is Free McCauley. Don't make fun of me too much, and I'll repeat later. Either way. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about blogging for business. We're going to talk about why you can't avoid blogging for one more day, how to develop an editorial calendar, and also a formula for blog posts that people will read. And I've allowed some time for Q&A. First, I'd like to know who do we have in the room? Are we primarily solopreneurs, entrepreneurs? Are we working for someone else? No? Yes? Are we blogging? Awesome. Yes. Want to be blogging? Yes. Want to be blogging? Should be blogging? That's me. <laughs> I recently had my website redone, and for the month that I was having it redone, I promised myself I was going to be writing blog posts, and I didn't. So between Christmas and New Year's, I'll be creating a whole bunch of content. Because that's the. Uh, that's just what happens. I blog for everyone else. I'm a freelance writer, and uh, I write for I write for other businesses on a variety of different topics. In 2010, corporate America laid me off, and it was probably one of the best things that ever happened to me. When it happened, my friend said to me, "What do you love to do?" And I looked at him and literally went, ah, I don't know. "I'm not really sure." I said, I'd love to go to work and get a paycheck every two weeks. And he pointed at me and laughed at me and said, I'm laughing at you. And he said, I know you better than that. Really, what do you love to do? Because now is really an opportunity for you to do something that you love to do. So I left and I realized that for my, for my whole life, I love to be a writer. So I come at this from, from the perspective of creating written word content. And as we go through today and hear, hear some of the other speakers, we know that there's other types of content we can be creating. Um, but for today, I love the written word. I decided, really flying by the seat of my pants, that I was going to be a freelance writer. Come on in. There's some, some more seats back there. Sorry. No, that's OK. Come on. We just got started. Uh, I realized that that I, I had always loved being a writer. When all the other kids were doing poster board and glitter group projects, I would be in the corner writing a five paragraph essay. So your first note is, blogging is really just a five paragraph essay. And we'll kind of get to that at the end and circle back. So why can't we avoid blogging? Why should we be blogging? Why should we either be doing it for ourselves, for our business, or, um, or on behalf of other people like I do as a ghost blogger? And really, it's for Google. First of all, Google loves when we're adding new content to our website. I'm by no means a Google expert. It sounds like perhaps you are. Maybe you can give us some insight <laughs> to that. Right. But I'm you a know, Google expert. I used to work for GoDaddy, and it does increase your search engine optimization. Just to simply be adding content. If you so, have them at the same site that you create at the same time, the same amount of content, the one that is doing more will get higher on the list than the one that has less. So just by virtue of changing my website, that's helped. And then by adding new content, that helps as well. And all different kinds of content, right? Not just blogging. Go ahead. So the, the, the thing that I've noticed, and I'm sure everyone else has too, is that um, it's the quality of the content mm -hmm. that really, really matters. Because you know, I find I found people have written wonderful blog posts and come back a second time and it's just you know lousy. Mm -hmm. Too is consistent, new, and relevant for sure. For sure, because that's not a no, not at all. And it, it really does take some take some planning. And we'll we'll talk a little bit a little bit more about that today. Who could use more business on my website? <laughs> right? I think everyone. Know, <laughs> <laughs> like, everyone, right? Photographer back here. So I can use more business, yeah. right? So we can add we can add photos of content to our site. Well, and, and we put those keywords and we write a nice story or have someone write a nice story for us. So we can all use more visitors. Uh, blogs on business sites, those are the ones that you know we're adding content to, uh, results in 55% more visitors. That's a really good picture, by the way. I'm going to do this one. <laughs> Jazz ones. Who wants, uh, who wants 
consumers to go to their website or go to their go to their business website or their blog and say, "Wow, that's somebody I want to do business with." Mm -hmm. Right? <clears throat> I want to build a great reputation and show myself as an expert. Yes, blogging is one of one of the most cost efficient and effective ways that we can do that. That we can really showcase ourselves is creating that useful content, like we talked about, and also uh, websites that have content really build a good relationship with their customers and their prospects. Because we're out there telling our story, we're out there sharing what we know. And brands that consistently create relevant content get more leads. Now, the number that I got was from HubSpot, which deals with huge brands, and it said something like 1,200 more leads on average per month. For little old me, one, I wouldn't know what to do with 1,200 leads. Two, I don't think it's really gonna drive 1,200 leads. But the point is, if we're adding new relevant content, we're really going to be getting more leads. People are going to be more attracted. They're going to be finding our website more. That's great, Nan. Super. We know we should be blogging and we know why. But where do we get ideas for our blog posts? Really, what do we want to be writing about to make that content new and relevant? We really want to be writing tips that our target market finds useful. So let's take a step back and think about <coughs> the target market. What does that mean when we say that? Your average consumer? No, people are <coughs> actually interested in what you're doing, what you want, what they want from you. What they want from you, but also who are you looking for as a business or a business owner? So it's really clearly defining who do we want to be talking to. And I think it's an overall, what I'm learning, it, it's really an overall piece of your of your business plan or of your, you know, if you're working for a larger organization, you've got some piece in that in that bigger picture of who are we trying to reach, what's the story we're trying to tell, and what's the product we're bringing to the marketplace. And on the other side of it is who's interested in what we're offering, for sure. So it's really kind of doing the, the math of who we want to talk to. So we've really got to know who we want to be talking to so that we can be writing blog posts and creating content that really speaks to them. Does anybody want to share who their target market is? Who do they want to be talking to? Veterans transitioning out of the military. Fantastic. And what's the what's the business or the organization that you're with? That is my own business, and I do career coaching and counseling, how to do the resume and interviewing and networking and working with them. Wow. So what are the kinds of topics, maybe? that um, would speak to that audience that might not speak to another audience? Um, probably uh, repositioning yourself from differences between military life and civilian um, mm -hmm. life in, in corporate America, how to dress, how to interact with people, how to build relationships. It's kind of putting a spin on a generic career post. So that's where we get that relevant content, where we get that um, we're really speaking to speaking to our audience. So that's one of the ways we can create content. What are the questions people are asking you? When I was redesigning my website, I realized I started asking people what they thought of it. And they said, Well, what do you do? I said, Well, how does this page? Don't you read it? Kind of smart aleck comment. I shouldn't have done it that way. <laughs> but it's really, what do I do? What do you um What's your process? How do you help other businesses? So answer those questions that folks are asking, asking you all the time. Um, when we, and I also like that because I can also, you can also pull out a blog post that answers one of those questions and send it to somebody. You don't have to retype that email. And say, here's a blog post there wrote about that. Um, we also want to showcase ourselves as the expert. So if someone's always asking you, if your marketplace is always asking you a particular question, you've got a blog post about it, you're showca showcasing yourself as the expert. So you're the expert with uh, veterans transitioning back into the working world. That's, we want you to be the person that people go to. If I have a friend transitioning out and looking for a job in the non-military world, that's who I want. I want you to be top of mind. When you've got a company that's looking for somebody who needs a blogger, they say, I've got no time to, to write. You call me or you call somebody else in the room who's a blogger. When you, um, when you need some you know, 
career coaching, I was thinking, not career coaching, I'm sorry, business coaching, and you're looking for some social media guidance, who's my first person, my go-to person would be you. And that's who you want to be. And so if you're creating, when we're creating content uh, on our blogs, we really want to be uh, showcasing you as the expert. So when I write for, uh, for a business, I go in and I say, tell me about your business. Tell me about who are you trying to reach? And what's the story that we're trying to tell? And we create content that's based on, based on what they tell me. And sometimes it takes somebody else listening to you for you to be able to articulate maybe who your target market is, what your uh, what your expertise is, and really where you can where you can reach your reach your audience. <laughs> what should you be blogging, or what do you write on your blog? You really want to give your brand a voice, even if you are your brand, as is the case I think with quite a few of us in the room. We still have a have a brand. So a brand isn't just the mission of the company. It isn't just come on in. It isn't just what we do. Uh, it is. It's really uh, about how you make people feel. So I recently listened to a podcast where they talked about the customer experience as it relates to content marketing, just overall blogging, podcasting, video, photo, all of it, all of the content that you can put out there. And it talked about how we used to talk about customer experience kind of at the end of the line. After you had you know, written the ad, brought them in, they ate your hamburger, and then you asked them, what did you think about our hamburger? What did you think about our service at McDonald's? And we didn't really think about the customer's experience from the beginning. We didn't really think about, uh, let's really bring them in with some, with some content or with an experience right from the beginning. Where we it's called life cycle, life cycle marketing, where we really create that message and that feeling that we want to give people from the outset of when when we meet them or when we attract them to our business. And we bring them through with that feeling that we want to give them. And one of the ways that we do that and can continue to do that is through um, is through creating content that really speaks to them and creates that feeling in them. So for me, it's I want to tell your story. Are you telling your story? I want to get you thinking about that. Are you telling your story in a way that's effective? Because what I found was when I asked people about my website, the answer I got was, well, we don't really know what you do. Like, we kind of know your story. And we kind of know what you do. We don't really know who to refer to you. We don't exactly know how you do business. And I was like, oh my god. What do I do? We sit down. I had a glass of wine. <laughs> All right, I had two. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> and I started sketching out, what do I want people to be saying when I go back and ask them that question? When I roll up that new website or I roll up that new product or I develop a product and introduce it and say, is this going to work for you? And really, what's the feeling I want to create? And I realize I'm Irish. I love telling a good story, right? I could sit around with my brother. So you can watch a half hour TV show and it'll take that kid 45 minutes to tell you what the show is about. <laughs> that's how we are. And that's what I love to do. And what I love is, is sitting with, you know, sitting with a business owner or sitting with someone who represents a brand and saying, what do you do and how do you want how do you want to make people feel? And so we're kind of talking about the the middle of the process, which is which is blogging, but really we can create content right from the beginning that really speaks to those people that you do want to be reaching and really start to tell your story. <coughs> so now you've got <coughs> some ideas. We want to answer some questions. We want to showcase you as an expert. I want to take it back a little, a little bit. So we want to, um, but where do, we, where do we put all those ideas? In your blog. So I have notebooks. They laugh at me. They're like, why don't you use an app to track all of your ideas? I have an app I use. I like the little sheets. <laughs> I like the sheets for me to They're sheet. like this, and I take out the paper. I'm like, I'm much faster writing. I don't know. I'm like, I'll put it in an app later. And paper is sort of I have, app. Yeah, there's something about writing it with a pen, right? Or pencil or whatever. I'm just stick with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I remember it more. Paper and pen, anybody else? Yeah. Oh, God. 
So we want to write, when we want to write a blog post that people will read, it sounds boring, right? To your point, don't be boring. Keep it simple. And how do we do that? I always think in bullet points and bold. Bullet points numbering and bold. So what I do is I, I take that idea, and I actually have, where's Dana? Dana's not in here. She asked me this week, she's like, how do you write a blog post? So interesting that you should ask. I said, typically I start in the middle. Typically, those tips that you want to give people, or that advice, or those how to's, how to make a chocolate milkshake, is really the heart of your blog post. And you take that, and that really, um, that can, for me, that can go in a different way than I maybe originally intended as I'm writing it. As you're going through your thoughts and you're doing your research for the meat of the post, that can kind of go, uh, maybe go in a different direction. So you kind of take that and see what story, what story am I telling in the meat of the post, and you can. And then you write an opening and a closing for it. And at the bottom, don't forget your call to action. To learn more about residential real estate, getting a mortgage, whatever it is, getting a job as a veteran, whatever it is, call, put your phone number, schedule a free consultation, whatever it is that your that your call to action is, download our free webinar, check out my podcast about this. Whatever it is, make sure there's a call to action at the end. But should you do that if you're putting the content on the site? And things like the phone number and contact information go up to the site anyway. And that's where I struggle. I'm like, how to have a call to action? Um, I still say yes. My thinking is, I well, I know some things about <laughs> the content that I put out there and how people get to my site. And I know it's primarily through Facebook, Twitter, and now a little bit of LinkedIn because I just started marketing for LinkedIn. And um, uh, my thinking is they're going to one link. And now my website's a little bit call to action friendly, much more call to action friendly than it was before. But I still think people want to know, like, I scan. And I read and I get to the bottom and I go, oh, click for a free, call for a this, follow me on. And I click that. I really sometimes don't go to any other part of the website. I don't know. What do you guys think? If I can. Because most people are using this to find it and to keep it simple. They have to bounce all of your site for your contact information to get back to or buy the order or whatever you're trying to sell. They're not going to do it. So it needs to be on every page. Yeah, absolutely. So that way the mobiles can find it faster. You want to make as few clicks as possible between getting there and purchasing or doing whatever that action is. So mm -hmm. if it's to sign up for a webinar or to follow you someplace or at the all, end of all of my blog content, podcast content, everything is my opt-in. So I want to get you on my email list. So at the end of everything, there is a thing called magic action box. And you, there's a call to action to join and you sign up. That way I can get them to do that quickly. Backing up something important, you're putting out important information. Two of them is, is better than one. Mm -hmm. I think, so, yeah, that we're that we're fast, that we're mobile, that we want to get to what we want fast. And so we do, and it looks kind of it might look kind of silly when you're sitting on your computer looking at it, but yeah, that's that's really what because we don't want to. I always think that like if I'm the consumer, I want to click to get your free whatever. I want to opt in. I want to love you on Twitter. I want to whatever it is. And, and to that point, so we've written a blog post. What do we do with that? I share on social media. Yeah, I share early, share often. <laughs> to your point, to do it more than once. Yeah. Okay. Social media. <laughs> and that's what drives traffic to my website. I'm curious now that I've had a little bit of a change and I've got some keyword action going on and a little bit more focused on that, how much organic traffic I'll get, but primarily it's through social. Um, when you say sharing social media, do you actually go and like copy and paste the link into everything, or do you use something like RSS feed and just like like auto post it? I do most of my social live. I use Buffer. I'll buffer my own post. I don't retweet myself or true coffee. <laughs> I don't think so. If anyone sees me, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, like I'm right now. Nine thousand tweets. Stacy's like, I got one. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so I do it live. My feeling is that social media is networking. It's social. It's not sales. It's not push it out there. I know some some local brands. I, one in particular I saw her present yesterday, and she's like, well, you'll see. We'll just push our content out to Facebook and Twitter, but really I'm on LinkedIn. 
Nobody knows that. All I see is I go to your Facebook page and it's not live, and that makes me wonder about your brand. They happen to be a marketing company. And I'm like, I don't think you're doing your brand any service by not being live, at least sometimes. I think that's more my opinion, but I also heard that this morning where she said, you, you've got to be on there live, at least sometimes. Mm -hmm. Also, using your content in a newsletter. You can take your blog post and use it as your, uh, your newsletter message. You may tweak it a little bit so that it's a little bit more kind of like a letter to your audience, but the meat of your newsletter really can be from your blog post. I do that a lot for clients. I have a client who's like, I put out a new blog post, let's do another newsletter. I'm like, okay. And we kind of take the heart of the heart of his blog post and use it. That's how we can do it right here. I got ahead of the class, my own class. Um, that is. What else was I going to? There were a couple things that I realized last night, of course, in the middle of the night. Do you ever have those moments where you're like, I forgot to put that in there? <coughs> One of the things I'm starting to use uh, on my blog, I have a WordPress blog. I'm using Yoast, Y-O-A-S-T, as a plugin for SEO. Okay, people are shaking their heads. I'm at a tech conference, so that's the thing. <laughs> All I know is I know I find my keyword, I wordsmith it a little, and I make sure the little light on the side is green. And if I add a <laughs> picture, if I add an image, I use all those keywords in there too, and it still stays green. So it's all good, right? Right? I love Yoast. It's so simple. Like, even I can use it, and I'm really not. I don't even know where to put it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's a platform where you use for blog? WordPress. Yeah. And yeah. do you use Buffer to um, send over to your social media? I, yeah, I use Buffer. Um, I use the Hootsuite sometimes, but I really love Buffer. I love Buffer because I can be reading a blog post and you hit that little symbol, and they're like, oh, you can buffer it. And I have LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook set up so I can pick which platform I send it out to. And to your point, I don't send it the same message to all three platforms. Like, I want to hashtag the Twitter stuff. LinkedIn, I might ask a question uh, that might attract my target audience. A little bit more because that's a different audience on LinkedIn than it is on um, it, than it is on Facebook or Twitter. So it does both the schedule post or is it you can you can do the upgrade. I think it's called awesome. How awesome is that upgrade? I think the upgraded version is called awesome. Not on the free. I just hit and and it buffers it out too. I think whenever it's it thinks it's an optimal time. That's the other. I saw a two week. Yeah, I was gonna say, I thought and you can customize the time. Yeah. So you don't have to figure it out. Oh, okay. I know. I'm just telling you. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. Uh, so I saw a tweet before I came upstairs asking about best blogging times. I would say watch your Google Analytics. Gary's here this afternoon talking about Google Analytics. Um, a three, whatever the three o'clock sessions are, 320, 315. Talk about Google Analytics to learn more about what are the optimal times when people are visiting your site. Uh, the suggestion being that's when you would publish. My thing is, if, if most of my traffic is coming from social media, I'm going to push it out to social media when most people are watching my social rather than when are people going to my website. So it's kind of a, a strategy to consider which, which is best for you, for your brand. Maybe you combine them because you're a bigger brand and you've got a lot of posts. Can you see that that's where you're from? Where it's where it's coming from? Yeah, it's in acquisitions, social acquisitions. And she's gonna tell us so much more about it later. Yeah, Paris the three three fifteen session. I'm curious because I I know like ten dollars is no basics and can be a little bit tiny to finger. So I'm kind of curious once you dig in, what can you really find and what can you customize on that? I have a question for you. You said you're freelance writer, so you write for businesses. So how do you handle it um, from a byline standpoint? Like, do you, does the person that you're really writing for have a writer profile, either on Google Plus or on LinkedIn or whatever? And and do you then do they attribute that writing to them so they get credit for it? I'm very curious how you handle that because we run into a lot of. Yeah, most of the time I'm ghost blogging for right, folks. Right. The challenge being if you're creating a name for yourself as a writer, you don't have that authorship. 
so what I'm doing is either negotiating it into the deal or I'm finding opportunities where I can be put, I can buy, be by line. So I'm ready. No, but what I'm talking about is from a business standpoint, what, what if, if someone's paying me to write for them, I want them to get the credit as an author. So do you have them put it on their LinkedIn? Do you put it on their LinkedIn? How are they getting that credit for writing? It's a lot of times I deliver it. A lot of times I'm working with their marketing person, so they're handling they're handling that piece of it. Um, if so it, your this, final product is a word document or something, not well, post time. Okay. Yeah. When I post it, I'm using their Yoast, but in terms of like authorship and, and Google and all of that, that's more on the website marketing side for me. For me, which is interesting because I. We can talk more about that. I don't know that's the way I should be doing it. So, I'm curious. When you decided to present on this, why did you not want to show us your blog? Because my site was under construction until five days ago. Uh, <laughs> that's a good answer. <laughs> Have you found that there's an optimal number of days for usage of blogging? I mean, trading off between like all your other commitments in life and your content generating for your website. Like, I had somebody tell me. You Blogging five days a week, you know, the weekends off. And I was like, ah. <laughs> well, like, no. my thinking on that is what's the quality of those posts and how long are those posts going to be? I'm not going to pump out five, 200 word blog posts that, even if they're relevant and useful, it's a debatable, it's debatable as we see and as we hear. <laughs> my feeling is that you, if you're a content creator, should I be blogging three times a week? Probably. On the other hand, should I be blogging on my own blog three to five times a week, or should I be blogging on mine one to two times a week, publishing on LinkedIn, writing for a website under my own byline, and getting my name up there and then staff? Yeah, so that was going to be my follow-up question. So if the goal is to blog five times a week, how many of those should be on your own domain versus how many should be on uh, major content sites in your niche or in your industry that then link back to your social media and your website? The trend is probably one to two times on your own, and if you're going to be blogging that much, also to be having it on, to have your name out there on other sites and get those links back. Not even from a technical, which for me it's really from more of a business perspective. I want my name out there more, and because I do a lot of ghost blogging, I don't have a ton of bylines, so it gets me, it gets me bylines and links back. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I think there's two kinds of bloggers. There are bloggers who blog for marketing purposes and to get Google to see the site, those are not real bloggers. Those are people who, keyword bloggers? Who, yeah. Then you have the people whose business is the blog. Like I follow a blog, it's really awesome, I think you should follow it. It's called People I Want to Punch in the Throat. <laughs> <laughs> of those posts. I actually write their 
non-keyword kind of posts. I get a keyword sometimes. But we're right. Uh, what I write for them is about local events or uh, they're an HVAC company. I write about clean air, how to have clean air, you know, natural ways to treat your allergies, the kind of fluffy stuff that as consumers we would read. And I, because we read a lot of blogs, you can probably go to the blog too and see the ones that we know are keyword rich, that they do that because they're in a tight space, they're in the HVAC space. So that's something else to consider. If you're in a tight space, your strategy is going to be a little bit different than those of us who are really just establishing and attracting a target audience or who are putting out good content for the folks we know are reading our blog or to attract that audience and to really create content that we can use in our newsletter and that we can share on social media. Super excellent. So I think it's pretty, they, they do a lot of content, a lot of keyword stuff because they're what's HVAC, uh, uh, heating, heating and air conditioning. Okay. So that, <coughs> it, it's tough to get found online, right? Because we know some folks are paying for their spot. Um, <coughs> Based in the East Valley, I don't even know how many HVAC, hundreds and hundreds of HVAC companies. So what we do is we have a, a different strategy. It's one, they're a little bit of a, a bigger brand. They're an established company. They've been around for years, 40 some years. So we've got some some posts that are SEO heavy that we've got an SEO person writing. I don't typically write SEO keyword heavy posts. I do keyword targeted posts where we, we know what we're trying to write about in that post and we work a keyword in a few times. Um, so they've got a combination. So it's really looking at what your strategy is, and kind of as you're as you're walking through a marketing plan, and you're and you're looking at your online marketing plan, really what's your strategy? Which is a fantastic lead into Casey Harris, who's coming up next in this room, <laughs> talking about social media. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy your day. Thank you. I knew I could segue. <laughs> I was just waiting. I was just waiting for the opportunity. You don't all really have to sit. You're allowed to sit. Yeah, you can go on over. Yeah. Oh, nice.